Oke okay, teman-teman bahasa drum kali ini gue lagi ada di LA jadi uh, hari ini spesial banget karena uh, gue berkesempatan untuk datang ke salah satu pabrik drum terbesar di dunia dalam arti kata namanya sangat besar banget ya jadi pastiin kalian stay tune terus di sini jangan sampai kelewatan tonton dari awal sampai habis like share dan subscribe thank you. Sekarang kita udah di mobil, mau berangkat dengan sama Megan Halo Jadi kita langsung aja ke tempatnya Gila ya, perjalanannya ke Oxnard keren banget Karena jalanan-jalanan itu kelilingin sama bukit-bukit tapi sebelah kirinya laut kayak di Sulawesi mungkin ya kayak di Lombok juga keren banget ya Well, hi guys, I'm Joe Hofer, I'm from Drum Workshop I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the factory and show you the ins and outs of how we manufacture our drums here in Oxnard, California We're gonna go ahead and head over to the uh, shell shop this way Yeah, we'll come back around to these, these departments and I'll show you yeah. the insides, but yeah. So these guys are pretty much all sitting here waiting to get, get the finish ply applied onto the shells. But you can see here, this is our uh, selection of finish plies that we offer. A lot of broken glass, your oyster finishes. Yeah, I call it the roadworthy material because you don't feel as bad if it gets scuffed. Not like you would with your exotic wood finish kit. <laughs> Yeah. What about this? Oh, we got some Halloween decorations going. Yeah, we're get, we're feeling uh, we're getting into the spirits of Halloween, so we're decorating around throughout the different departments in DW. So I'm sure you guys will see some more around. It's pretty cool. Uh, these are just some of the exotic woods that we offer as far as the collector series go. We also have some of our peer uh, series shells lined up here. Uh, for example, if you guys haven't heard or seen Purple Heart. I know Purple Heart. Yeah, Purple Heart wood. Comes from South America. Oh, really? Yeah, in Brazil. Okay. What's the difference between this and maple? This and maple? Yeah. Well, this is a darker wood, Got so it. it's going to give you more of a warmer tone. Warmer tone. Yeah. The really cool, unique thing about Purple Heart wood is folks think that this is standard dyed. This is its natural form. Yeah. Uh, when they mill this log, it comes out like a brown yellowish tint, but then as soon as it gets exposed to the sunlight, it gives itself a tan and turns purple. Oh. Yeah. And then when we get it to the purple that we want it to be, we'll do like a spray lacquer finish on it, or some guys will just get a clear lacquer finish, which has a uh, UV protection in it, mm -hmm. which will keep that dark purple locked in there. Does that turn twice? Uh, I want to say 11 plies, 11. Purple Hearts, 11 plies, HVLT shell yes, configuration, okay. yeah, sounds pretty, sounds pretty awesome, yeah, yeah, this is Terry Bozio one, right? This is a Terry Bozio, yeah, the black page, it's a DW Icon series, really cool thing about this, guys, we did 250 of these guys, Terry Bozio actually signed 250 drum heads so each drum will come with his signature and then you also got a uh, another head so that you can replace that head and not damage Terry's autograph and then you get an awesome 13 inch vinyl of Terry's three minutes and 50 second drum solo which is pretty interesting for the black page mm -hmm. which uh, for what I was told black page was a piece of music that Terry learned to audition to play in Frank Zappa's band so this is a tribute to Terry Bozio and to Frank Zappa. And what the shell is, is it's a bird's eye maple with dye plum wood. These are actually uh, inlaid. So this is dye plum wood, different species from the bird's eye maple. And the same with the lettering for, our, for the black pages. And then the music note was just burned on with a laser. So our guys in Indiana will cr make these for us and then we ship them here in Oxnard and we wrap them on our drum shells. Mm. Yeah, so it's Icon Series. 
Black Page. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we have a lot of different uh, exotic woods that consumers can choose from. Personal favorite, whenever I'm ready to get my paycheck back, I'm probably going to go with a Royal Ebony finish. Black Nickel Hardware. Maybe like a black candy burst on it. I think it'll look really sexy. Yeah. And then we have our most common exotic wood, Map of Burl. Yeah. AKA, I call it Freddy Cougar skin. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, just to give you guys an idea of some of the exotic woods that we do, um, over on this side, this is where I, this is what I call our lumber yard. We have a different, we have all the different uh, exotic woods to our North American hardwood maple that we get from Northern Michigan. We receive uh, our lumber on pallets like so and when we receive them here we sort through them separating the pretties from the uglies but we don't discriminate against the uglies we use those more of the core of the drum shell and then we use the more appealing stuff on the outside these sheets come to us about 136 of an inch thin so it's almost as thin as paper and the guys at the mill factory once they debark the logs they lay them they spin them and they have a, a blade that's like like a facial razor blade and it shaves the log so they take an 18 inch diameter log and they'll spin that within 46 seconds all the way down to about five or six inches down to the heart of the log and then once they get to that spot then it, the logs no no more you know no good we don't need any more of it but yeah so once we sort this stuff then what we'll do from here is we'll take it into our shell shop and cut the lengths that we need them to be and also the grain orientation, which I'll show you what I'm talking about over here. We've got Paduke over here. Paduke. God dang, man, I'm totally out of it right now. This is Baruch. And Baruch is, looks like you're lining up, what is this? Uh, Paduke. Paduke. Yeah. Baruch is lining up some Paduke. We call this book matching. It's the same method that they do for, for guitars when they're doing the facing. So when we sort the wood and we get it all ready to where we're going to come in here and trim them, this is the first station that they'll see. Just like a big giant scissor. So we cut the lengths that we need them to be and also the grain orientation. And for those that are not familiar, familiar with the grain orientation, I'll give you guys a sample, show you guys an idea. So you got diagonal grain. Uh, vertical grain and then horizontal grain. Uh, they each play a character in the actual drum itself. With a horizontal sheet, that produces your highs and your mid frequencies. Your vertical sheets is what produces your low end tone. And then your diagonal sheet is basically a hybrid of these two. You get the noodliness from the vertical sheet and then you also get the tension from the horizontal. With a diagonal grain, we would use those in like our SSC kits. Um, and what SSC, SSC stands for is special shell configuration. And for an X shell in an SSC, we would do those like in an eight inch Tom Tom. You know, Tom Tom's already a high pitched drum. So we want to bring up a nice complimentary low end tone. So the diagonal grain cross laminating them in the shell helps us produce that nice complimentary low end tone with that high pitched pitch drum. So, that gives you the idea of the, the individual sheets that construct our shells. Once we trim up the sheets over here, the next step is to actually make plywood. So, right here in this station, this is our first gluing process. Uh, we make either two ply or three ply sheets here. For our three ply sheet, we use two verticals with one horizontal. We'll, use, uh, we'll lay out the vertical sheets on this table. And then we'll run our horizontal sheet through this glue right here, which we got Jesse James ready to rock and roll with the sheet. And then what this machine will do is it puts glue on the front and back side of the sheet. And then Jesse will come over here, set it down on a vertical sheet, and then he'll lay another vertical sheet on top of that, sandwiching them together. And then once he's got all his sheets ready to rock and roll to go into our hot press. 
we'll plop those guys in there where the where the sheets will get pressed at 3,100 pounds of pressure under 200 degrees of heat for about seven to eight minutes depending on the wood species. And then we'll go ahead and we'll walk around so you guys can see what those guys look like. You guys notice how it's a little humid in here? Yeah. Yeah, and it's we, keep, we try to keep the humidity at like 53% in this room. Uh, with the Santa Ana winds like we're having today, uh, this helps us uh, make sure that we keep the moisture in the wood because wood's going through so much trauma, it wants to do its own thing. So when you control the environment that the wood is in, it allows us the working time to make our drum shells. And then with the humidity control, if you guys look up on the walls, there's actually little white boxes that are spraying out mist. That's how we uh, keep the humidity in this room and the moisture. Yeah. And you can feel the heat coming off the machines as we walk through them too. How's it going, Mr. Smith? Good, how are you? Doing well, sir. So, when the sheets come out, which these are semi, semi fresh because they're warm, they come out looking like so. But this guy is actually a two ply using only one sheet of horizontal and then one sheet of vertical. And once we get to this point, the next stop is cutting off the ends of these sheets so that they're nice and parallel and ready for our guys to do what we call a stagger roll when the shells go into our hot and cold press, which we call cool temper process here at DW. I'm gonna pop this guy back up and we'll walk over. To the next step. Yeah, there's that beautiful Royal Ebony. That map of Pearl. Do you guys know how to identify a DW shell from a Keller shell? If you don't, I'm gonna teach you right now. So, drum workshop have been we've been making our own shells since '97 beforehand we were using Keller and I like to always show people how they can identify a DW shell from a Keller shell so if you look on the inside if you have a collector series with reinforcement rings all you need to do is just look at the reinforcement rings and look for the joints and if you see finger joints like that that's gonna be a DW shell that means it was made here in Oxnard if you see a straight seam that's gonna be a Keller shell so that's how you can identify a DW shell from a Keller. So we no longer use Keller shells, really, which I'll tell you all about that over here. Um, these guys, these are our, our hot and cold press machines. We have everything from a six inch drum all the way up to a 24 inch, but DW here at Drum Workshop, we do offer uh, all the way up to 26, 28, or if you think you're Tommy Lee and you need a 32 inch kick drum, we could totally pull that off for you. Uh, it would be a Keller shell because we don't have big enough press machines to make those sizes, but though we still offer those sizes in collector series. So these press machines here, there's two of, for each size. Uh, one press machine is a cooking press machine, which cooks the shell, and then when it's done, we take it out and we put it in a cold press, which sucks all the heat out of the shell, crystallizes the glue, and actually gives the shell a nice tonage. Because when you pull a hot shell out of a hot press and you tap on it, it's gonna sound dead. You're not gonna get any of that nice tone that you would normally. So uh, cold press is a must, because also if you just set a hot, a hot shell on the ground, that shell eventually will go out around. So to assure that the shells stay round, we put it in a cold press and we suck all that hot air or all that hot heat, heat out and it leaves that drum in its round form. Uh, I'm gonna take you over here, introduce you to Emmanuel, and Emmanuel's gonna show you guys how we do our stagger rolls and the steps and procedures of applying these shells into this uh, into these machinery. Alright guys, so this is Emmanuel here. He's part of our shell wrapping crew. Uh, I'm gonna have him give you guys a little show wrap demonstration. He's gonna show you how it's done. Yeah? Emmanuel, all right. it's all you, buddy. So welcome to our show shop. My name is Emmanuel. I'm gonna be demonstrating a 22-inch uh, bass drum for you guys, performance series. So just for reference, we have our diagram right here. 
Okay, so after my friends on the press, they press our plywood, my friends on the saw want to cut it with a precision where we don't want the seams to gap and we don't want the seams to uh, overlap. We want them to come together at the, just the right spot. So it takes a lot of math, uh, adding, subtracting, a lot of trial and error. So once they finally get the numbers down, they bring it, uh, they bring it to me here. They put it on our racks and it's a simple three-step process from here. My first step, I'm gonna grab my outer. This is gonna be the outside part of the shell. It's a two-ply. It's a long grain and a short grain, as you guys can see here. So I dab a little bit of glue on that edge so that uh, when it comes together, it gets a nice tight seal, right? Now my second step, I'm gonna grab my, my fork. This is gonna be the middle part of the shell. It's a short grain, long grain in the middle, and another short grain on this side. So this one gets ran through the glue roller. As it comes out, I want to double check to make sure that I have a nice even spread of glue on both sides. And I'm going to lay it on top of my outer. My last step, I'm going to grab my inner, which is going to be the inside part of my shell. It's a performance series, so we have another three ply. It's going to be a short grain, long grain in the middle, with a diagonal grain orientation, as you guys can see here. So this is going to be the inside part of my shell. So once I have them all staggered up, you guys can see here, we're ready to roll. And it becomes a base room, right? So I, we're, I'm actually gonna go right behind you guys to our 22 inch hot press. Now this press, it's about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you guys pay attention to these seams, you're gonna see that they come together. I lock my machine, I set my timer for 10 minutes. Make sure that the seams are nice and even. Uh, this is gonna give it 2,600 pounds per square inch of pressure. It's gonna cook for 10 minutes at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what makes our DW shell special, we have a patented process called cool temperature shell process which basically means right out of the hot press, we're gonna stick them into a cold press. Now what the cold press is gonna do, it's gonna, if I could demonstrate on this 14 inch. It's gonna give it the same amount of pressure, but instead of hot, it's gonna uh, extract the heat out of the shell. It's gonna crystallize our glue, it's gonna solidify our shell, and it's gonna uh, help with the retention of the nice circle shape to keep it from going oval. Now this is a finished product ready to move on to our next step. You guys can hear that? So now, this is ready to move on to our next step. We do everything from a six inch to a 24 inch here at this facility. If you guys take a look around at all our machines, we have a hot and a cold, and it's the same process for every single, every single size. The next step that we're gonna go is in the next room where it's going to be a little bit louder but i'll try to be as loud as i possibly can so you guys can hear me all right all right so once manuel makes the shells into the, in the shell shop we bring them into this room where we cut off the ends so that we get them nice and parallel put the shell inside this machine We've got two circular saw blades do a quick run through cut those ends off it'll go in looking like this like how you saw it come out of the press machine and then eventually come out looking flat, like so. So the next step, when we cut the shells, the next step when we cut the shells, is we do a little rough sanding to get all the axis glue off. So we have this machine right here that will do the inside veneer of the drum shell. But even though we have machinery that does sanding for us, still a perfection in company where we'll go through with, with a hand sander to make sure that everything's perfect and, and smooth and straight. And then for the outside veneer, we'll actually sand it on the machine right here, which is not being operated right now, as you see. 
But uh, I'm going to pop these guys back right here. And then for shells that call for reinforcement rings, after they're finished in here, they'll actually go back out to the shell shop. We'll take the shells out there, glue the reinforcement rings in, and then they'll go back into the hot and cold press and the reinforcement rings become one with that drum shell. And then we'll do a little more sanding to make sure that the shells are perfect the way we want them to be. Over here, this is where we do our bearing edges, which is a very important factor to have on your drum. So we have the different radius of bearing edges that we offer. We brought them out here, and then we'll take the shell, grind it out on this heavy grit sandpaper to get it flat, and then we check the bearing edges on this flat stone surface. So we plop the shell on, shine a light through, and then we rotate the shell, looking between the shell and the stone for the light. And as you see, there's light shining through, so this shell isn't done yet. So our guys will go through it over and over until that light is gone. And then we do that on top and bottom. Boom. This stone right here is the flattest surface that you'll find. Um, so a lot of folks see this and they think that's the same thing in their kitchen. I'll tell you, it's not. This is a zero degree radius. This is a pretty pricey piece of tool that we pay so we make sure that the bearing edges are perfect. We do a couple of other things. Uh, we also do bearing edges on our snares and also on our bass drum hoops. And then we do also one other thing on this area. We do what we call a snare bed. And let me show you guys what a snare bed is, pardon me. So a snare bed is a cut that we put on the rezzo side only, which I'll take it over to the stone and you guys can see it a lot better. So here at DW we cut a, a snare bed on our snares. You get a six and a half inch gap on both sides. So what that does is it allows the snare wires to lay flat and even on your rezzo head so that you get that nice snare pop when you're playing on it. So when you take your drum apart and you see that because you're cleaning your shells, don't worry. We do that on purpose. <laughs> These are where we drill out all the holes on the shells so that we can mount the hardware. So we drill out the holes for the lugs, your badges, your TB12 brackets on your floor toms, uh, holes for your spur legs all get drilled out here in this side of the room. Uh, we have some pretty fascinating uh, tooling here that we use, which helps us with the uh, production time. Uh, we have this guy that we're standing in front of. This is an old dinosaur. Sometimes it takes us a little longer to get some shells drilled out because of how tedious it is that we have to you know, make sure everything's all set up and square. Uh, this machine will take probably about 15 minutes to drill out a drum shell, where our CNC machines will drill out drum shells within about two to three minutes. So definitely helps us out with production time. And how our CNC machine works is we have these uh, different barcode books. So for each page tells, you know, it's for a different size and the different finishes. So if we have a 12 by 14 performance series show inside, we'll scan the barcode and then that computer will actually drill out all the holes perfectly symmetrically around the drum without anybody's hands going in there besides putting the drum in there, putting the plate on, kickstarting kick starting the machine on by just hitting a couple of buttons and scanning a barcode. And then, boom, starts drilling out the shells. Uh, this machine was designed uh, with an engineer from NASA, from what I was told, and it took us six months to design it and another six months for us to build this machine, which makes it the one of a kind. So this is, you only see this machine here at DW. So, unfortunately, I don't have anybody here operating one, so I can't show you how this machine works. Uh, yeah, this is a 16 inch in there. Yeah. Now, 
I would like to take you guys into our lacquer department and hopefully get to introduce you guys to Louis Garcia, who is known for doing our graphic design kits and some, you know, you may have seen on tours or videos, on TV maybe.